Hello, Light Menders, and welcome to Surviving the Holidays. Uh, this is Ask Me Anything. I We put it out to our YouTube community, and we're going to talk about loneliness, grief, and loss during the holidays, right? So through Thanksgiving and Christmas, Hanukkah, Festivus, uh, Solstice, wh whatever it is that you celebrate. So I'm going to be answering your questions. And if you want a deeper dive on this subject, we've got a course surviving and thriving during the holidays on our membership site, where Alicia and I can spend quite a bit more time on this. So moving forward. My greatest challenge is feeling unloved and a burden. My family of origin is toxic, and I've gone no to very low contact with them. I have family that welcomed me in, but I do feel guilty that I'm intruding on their lives. Did they invite you in? Uh, if First of all, if they invited you, rest easy. They invited you because they wanted you. If you invited yourself, if you said, I, I feel alone, and I feel like I'm struggling, and they took you in, and you feel like, oh, I'm such a burden, I feel so guilty. Here's a great life motto. Replace guilt with gratitude, right? Now, I'm not talking about the guilt that comes from doing something hurtful or wrong or going against our values or principles and betraying somebody. That's a healthy guilt. That helps us to, to change the behavior and make things right. No, no, I'm talking about the unnecessary guilt we feel when we accept help from other people. Most of us are much more comfortable giving help. When we give help, we feel benevolent. When we give help, we feel good. When we give help, we feel like we're decent people and we're making a difference. When we accept help or when we ask for help, we feel weak, like there's something wrong with us, that we couldn't do it on our own, that we couldn't stand on our own two feet. And that's hogwash. The human race, we need each other. We're social creatures. We need support. We need love. We need belonging. We need safety. We need company. Some of us in different degrees than others, okay? And in those cases, when people have offered their help, whether they've offered it or you asked for it and you and now you're receiving it, replace guilt with gratitude is the first thing that I would advise you. And the second, see what you can do to help out, to make their burdens lighter. Anytime I'm a house guest, my mom taught me growing up, anytime you're a guest in somebody's home, do the dishes. <laughs> And I do, and I get invited back everywhere I go. So that's what I would say about that. And when it comes to your family of origin and the pain and the loneliness that you feel, it's important to mourn and to grieve the family that you wanted that you never got. And how do you do that? You feel sad, you cry, you write about it, you vent, you process, you let it go. You accept what is, and you spend your time and your energy focused on the things that you can influence and change. Being away from my partner during the holidays, a long distance relationship. When Alicia and I were uh, dating and engaged, we were pretty much across the country and didn't see each other as often as we would have liked. So I, I know a little bit about what this feels like. I think that comes down to being realistic. Being realistic, there's going to be sadness and melancholy. Step into it. Accept it. Embrace that that feeling of sadness that you feel means that you have someone in your life that you care about and who cares about you. And that's a beautiful thing. Let your sadness be sacred, a symbol of this connection. Balance that with not feeling guilty about having fun, not feeling guilty about enjoying yourself, enjoying the people in your life, uh, connecting with others, if, if that's what you want to do. If you want to spend the holidays indoors in your pajamas drinking wassail uh, or apple cider is what that is, or, or hot chocolate and watching Christmas movies and crying, that may be what serves you best. So the question is, what serves you, right? What's going to support you? What's going to help you in the ways that you need it most? Obviously, phone calls, video chats, emails, right? Being in texts, all this, keeping that connection. But I, I understand it. It's hard because you can't be there to hold each other and to be close physically and to enjoy being in the same space. I would say if you're in a long distance relationship, most of those are designed to the long distance part at any rate come to an end and you'll be able to spend your life together. And so recognize that this is just a season, a painful season, but a beautiful season and enjoy it. Dealing with loneliness during the holidays, in my case, due to severing ties with some toxic family members. So not having a traditional Christmas dinner while many others do. I spent some time uh, out of the country when I was younger uh, and I was away from my family during the holidays, during Christmas. And what I did is, if you get invited to a Christmas dinner, great. But why can't you throw one, right? 
And if money is a concern or the time and effort needed to throw a dinner is con- is a concern, throw a potluck. Are there people in your circle? They may not be your first pick to spend the holidays with, they, and they might be, right? But are, are there people in your circle who are lonely and struggling this holiday season? Could you have them over? Are they safe to have over? And if so, could you hold that traditional Christmas dinner? Whether you prepare it with all the fixings, whether you order it out, or if you want to split the bill, make it a potluck and everybody brings something. Potlucks are awesome, right? I love I, I love a good potluck. Almost every party I throw is a potluck just because I love to have everyone get involved, right? And I love to to eat what everyone brings and to and to prepare something for them as well. So if that's a struggle, can you do that? If if that's not an option and it's safe to do so, can you go to the local homeless shelter? Some of my favorite memories as a teenager and as a young adult is I would spend Thanksgiving and Christmas, not the whole day, but like part of the day with people at homeless shelters, uh, helping to serve them food and then just sitting down and visiting with them. If you're sad and miserable, there is nothing that will cheer you up faster than being a friend to someone else who is sad and miserable. So these are just suggestions. Again, anyone in the comments, anyone anyone have any ideas for these? If you have ideas that are different than mine or experiences that are different than what I'm proposing, please share uh, so that everyone else can benefit from what you've got, right? This is a healing community. It's not just me. It's not just Leisha. My greatest challenge is being away from family. The holidays are to spend with the family and being away in a different country is really difficult. The loneliness and homesickness get worse. Now, this is similar to the one I just talked about. And as I said, I've I've spent the holidays away from family. I know how that feels. I want to push back a little bit on the statement, the holidays are for being with family. Yeah, but only because that's what we've all kind of collectively decided, right? There is no eternal written law that you must spend the holidays with your family. For some people, their family is toxic. And for other people, they know they've got a great family. They just can't get to them, right? But the holidays, to me... And to a lot of other people are about warmth and kindness and connection. So the question really is, okay, if I can't spend the holidays with my family, or even if I can, but how can I make room for warmth and kindness and connection? Again, so I've already given some examples of what that looks like. But the only thing I would say on this, again, that adds to what I've already said is push back against this heartache of I'm supposed to be with family during the holidays. You may have one of your best holidays yet. Warmth, kindness, connection. See who you can help. One issue I've heard that happens during the holiday season in colder months is an increased feeling of loneliness and external pressure from family to find love. What are effective ways to mitigate the loneliness or pressure to be in a relationship? One of my favorite shows, one of my favorite TV shows is Firefly. There's a great line where a man feels insecure because he's still a virgin and a woman tells him there's nothing shameful about being a virgin. It is simply another state of being. If people are pressuring you to find love and you feel like you failed because you haven't found love, being single is just another state of being. It's not superior or inferior to being with somebody in terms of your worth as a person. So fill your days with things that you're passionate about, with things that bring you fulfillment, with things that bring you joy. And then when you find somebody who can keep up, and wants to be a part of all that, and you want to invite them into that, then do it. But until then, fill your life with good things. Fill your life with good relationships. Pursue your hobbies. Pursue your interests. Grow as a person. And when nosy, albeit well-meaning family members try and prod you about your love life, it's okay to tell them everything else that's going on in your life. And I don't mean you need to have big, impressive things. You could say things like, I go to the library every day, and I spend three hours there reading things that expand my mind and things that I'm interested in. Or I'm involved in serving this group of people, right? Or I've started taking up this sport or or whatever it is. I don't care what it is. You feel pressure to find love because you're allowing others to put that pressure on you. It's like a ship in the storm. The storm can't sink the ship unless the ship lets the water in. Family members may be lonely or bored themselves and they're trying to live vicariously through you. Maybe they're wanting to experience the rush of dating and young love again. I don't know. People have a thousand different reasons. I've been in the, I've been there before. People were asking me all the time. The most important thing is to love yourself enough to love who you are and where you are and recognize it's just a step on the journey. My greatest challenge of the holidays is me being secretly bisexual. 
and no one but my mom and grandma and aunt know, and I have to hide it. If you have to hide it, you're wrestling with acceptance and belonging and being seen for who you are and that being okay with the people around you. I'm going to be honest. I'm a straight white male. I don't feel especially qualified by experience to counsel you as to what to do next. I know from the people that I love who are in your shoes that some of them find peace in the acceptance of those who do see and accept them. They find peace and joy in that and they open up and they come out when the time is right. Others find peace and joy in saying, this is me, here I am, deal with it. And recognizing that some people aren't going to deal with it very well, but they love not having to keep the secret anymore. And they would rather be open and let the chips fall where they may. This is one I'd actually love to hear from our YouTube community. What advice would you give this wonderful person? My friend is alone a lot during the holidays without a family. I can't bring them home with me, so what should I do? Leave the house a lot. Be home for the traditions you're going to be home for. Uh, spend the time with family members that you're going to spend time with. But if this person is your friend and you want to spend time with them, then get out and do things with them and enjoy time with them. And in the meantime, give them a book, give them a video game, give them a compact disc or a digital playlist, <laughs> more likely. Uh, something that they can enjoy in your absence and recognize as they're reading it, as they're watching it, as they're listening to it, that they're enjoying this because you love them and thought of them. So these are just a few of your questions. Again, Alicia and I dive deeper in our lesson on grief and loss and loneliness in our Thriving and Surviving the Holidays video course, which you can take on our membership site. Some of the questions that we answer in that course on this subject include, my greatest challenge is not having anyone I'd like to spend the holidays with. It's a lot of loneliness and depression, not having a spouse and or kids. My greatest challenge is that I moved away from all of my friends and family to another town for work, and I haven't really gotten close enough to anyone, so I have to spend the holidays alone, and I live too far to go back, back to visit people I knew. How do I enjoy the holiday? Dealing with the holidays while still grieving the loss of a loved one. I feel that my family tries to just shield and suppress those emotions. Missing people at the table. That's the price we pay for having a great family. They say grief is the price we pay for love. I miss those good times. And I often get disappointed during the holidays, maybe because I am not as close as I would like to be with my family. I just don't seem to enjoy the holidays as much as other people do, which makes me sad. Here at Mend Light, we're trying to offer services wherever you're at, right? Some people can afford counseling and to do our programs with a, with a counselor. Some people can afford our membership site and to do these deep dives. And others like YouTube is it. And we're trying to give you value right here on YouTube. But if you want to do this deep dive with Alicia and I, where we answer these questions, uh, go to mendedlight.com forward slash 25. And the membership is 50% off right now. The link is in the comments below. How do you deal with grief and loneliness in the holidays? What advice do you have and what experience do you have to share? Let us know in the comments and help each other out. What questions do you have for us? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, folks, keep shining because we need your light.